more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, top billing. As always, this is not a highlight channel. This is a film study. Stuff will be paused and rewound and slowed down ad nauseum. If you don't like film sessions like when you played back in the day, if you didn't play, you won't understand. But for the rest of you, let's get it. All right, I'm excited about this one right here. I, I, you know I get easily annoyed, and I can tell I'm going to be annoyed with this one because people are going to be like, oh, it's so-and-so by far. And you know what I do? If you do this whole so-and-so is better by far, I block you straight up. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, my goal for these face-off series is to have it be as close as possible so we can just get some really good dialogue in here and we can talk about the nuts and bolts of football, not fandom stuff, but... Anytime you pick Texas versus Oklahoma, I know what I'm going to get. So my block list is about to grow for real. All right. So I'm excited about Sam Ellinger. I did the study on the Texas spring game. and I love what I saw from Sam Ellinger. I just love Sam Ellinger just for the simple fact that people compare him to Tim Tebow. And I was a Tim Tebow fanatic. Just thinking about Tim Tebow makes me just want to run through the grocery store and just try to run over somebody in the aisle or something like that. And Sam, Gell Sam Ellinger gives me that same type of feeling, and so does the guy I'm going to compare him against, right? So we see here 6'3", 235 from Austin, Texas, the hometown hero, right? He went for 25-5 and five last year. I don't think a lot of people know that. 3,200 yards, right? Uh, so a lot of people don't think of him as an NFL prospect, but, man, I, I don't know about that, man. I might beg to differ. This guy was just a sophomore. He has two more years to play. So we see the career right here. First season didn't really go as well while he was getting adjusted. A 57.5% completion percentage, 1,900 yards, a 7.0 average, 11 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, right? On 275 attempts. Now, the marked improvement, you have to give this guy credit for. 25 and 5, like I said before, a 7.7 .7 average. So you can see that Texas is not really pushing the ball down feels like some of these other teams, right? So it's definitely a, a rhythm and timing offense, and it's very run-based. They play a very SEC brand of football. They really do. And um, so this is the next thing, if you really think about it, for, with some of the schemes. But uh, 3,200 yards, a 64.7% completion percentage on 425 attempts, but only a 7.7 .7 average. So you do the math. All right, so my guy Jalen Hurts, another Texas native, 6'2", 218 from H. Town, right? The H Town bomber right here. My man went for eight and two last season, but we're not gonna worry about his first his last season. We're only gonna concentrate on the first two seasons right here, statistically, to show you how very similar these guys are. So his first season, he was the SEC offensive player of the year. 23 touchdowns, nine interceptions, a 7.3 average, right? Very much in line with what Sam Elgin was doing even last year, right? So you see the attempts, 382 attempts, not as much. He's still a 62.8% completion percentage. You got to rock with it. This is off the chain. Now, sophomore year, uh, people say he took a step back, but if you really looked how the offense was constructed, it was a little bit different, right? Uh, way less attempts, 254 attempts. Uh, same result. Still got to the national championship game and everything. It was just a different way of doing it, right? 17 touchdowns. He only threw one interception. And I don't want to hear about the Dinkin and Dunk Duncan stuff because... Your man was a 7.7 .7 as, as a high, right? Sam Ellinger, but Jalen Hurts, 8.2 average, right? Now, 60.6 .6 completion percentage is nothing to, to phone home about, but it's not bad either. Not bad either. So if you're looking right there and you do the math, Jalen Hurts, more touchdowns in his first two years and less interceptions as well. But, hey, it is what it is. Let's get to the stuff that you really want to see, man. Let's get to these film studies and this analysis. All right, so as always, with a quarterback, I like to take inventory, what we're working with as far as the mechanics go. See front facing play action fake out of the weak pistol. Ride that bad boy in. All right, let's see. Man, look at the spacing right there. Very strong, very strong looking guy. Very good looking quarterback, man. Height, weight, everything. All right, you see the ball sliding right here, very close to the vest. I love it good for when someone's trying to rake at that bad boy and get it out of there oh look at this all right so we see him go through his progressions now let's see what's what are we working with right here Ooh, look at the spacing right there point and shoot foot good uh over the top delivery anchor foot real good should have some nice velocity on the throw like this and that he does all right, so here's my man Jalen. I want to focus on both Georgia games for them because that's even, right? 
that's even all right some people are going to be like all right it's not fair on one way or the other whatever they weren't prepared for Jalen. no georgia wasn't prepared for Jalen, but he still had to get the job done and um we know what texas did to georgia so all right Jalen. um not looking as good mechanically right there all right kind of a short step in right there with the point and shoot foot uh oh look at that elongated delivery uh elbow turnover right there if you look at this right now if you're a mechanic person you would say that if you do this a lot your your accuracy probably won't be as good but hey he gets the job done look at this this probably because he probably wanted to touch uh, put a little touch on that bad boy and that's exactly what he did right there the waddle in a very clutch throw so we can see the kind of difference in mechanics right there where ellinger is a little bit more traditional uh hurts may have a little bit to work on in that aspect but the results are the results um, this one right here you're gonna kind of have a seam and a quick curl um you see right there back to the basket play action fake so he has to work back to the other side i have lj humphrey right here kind of running a seam route uh, getting up Phil. Devin DuVernay here back on the back side. Kind of a quick curl. But you see opposite hash throw. So we're going to see what the arm strength is like right here. Being able to get this out. So he's decently late on the throw. I believe he probably wanted to go play side right here. But he comes back side um, and delivers a play. Gets it to his playmaker. And the playmaker is able to do something with it. All right. Like I said before, back to the basket. Play action fake. Now, you would like to see Ellinger work a little bit quicker. You see, he probably did want to go to front, go play side right here. They were picking on Tyson Campbell, um, but he decided to come back side right here. So you would like to see him hit Duvernay right here on his break, be able to go to his progressions really quick. But he's a little bit late on the throw, but he has very good arm strength. And you see him kind of throw him back. You know, get what I'm saying? So kind of throwing back to kind of cut down on the air time right there. But Duvernay's able to get that bad boy and get upfield as well. All right, you got a six-man protection right here. Now, this is where the cheese is going to be made. So you're going to pretty much have Earth Smith coming right here on a deep dig. You're going to have Waddle coming on an out route. I believe he's right here in a tight slot. So pretty much mirror routes right there. Devontae Smith is getting vert over here. And then you had a delayed slant uh, by Jerry Judy. Hertz does a great job of biding his time and going through his progressions and hitting this deep dig to Irv Smith. And we see it start to take shape right here. Now, when you're Hertz, remember this is third and 10 right here. Or third and 10 and they're going heavy zone. So pretty much coverage across the board. So. You know where you want to go maybe right here you would think originally he wanted to come right here but once again his zone that's a pick right there so you got to hold your water got judy coming around here but he might not have enough to move the sticks so you got to wait for something to uncover and it has to be accurate because you see everybody's bracketed right here so watch him slide you see that subtly slide in the pocket square up now look this is where the mechanics come into play so I like this. I like the makeup of the play. Everybody's talking about Dan Enos. Great job with him, but got to give Mike Loxley credit as well. And look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Look them away. Everybody's out there. Deliver the ball, strike, move the chains. And that was some severe pressure as far as the magnitude of the moment. All right, Jalen again. You have Devontae Smith in the boundary right here, running a corner route. Now, this is going to be against man coverage. So we saw the zone going on right here. Uh, backside, you got a quick curl. Uh, you got kind of a deeper curl here by the slot. Jalen Waddle. And then you have Earl Smith kind of running a stick route. Uh, pretty much a bang eight. Just clear and try to get in the void of the zone. But since it's man coverage, it converts into man coverage. Uh, he's got to wait for him to get a get some leverage on the inside dime back right here which would be mark webb for georgia all right so immediately if you thought it was going to be zoned by the way that they were posi positioned but then he had to kind of convert his mindset to something else and then you have a uh, an additional rusher coming here right so you got to be patient good blocking right here First and foremost, got to always have some good blocking, but good blocking right here. And we see Jalen standing tall in the pocket, standing tall and talented. And we see him 
anticipate this is an anticipatory throw right so before ever smith even uncovers right there he just slightly has the leverage he has to lead him look at this oh look at the product placement absolutely perfect don't be stealing my turns man people are always stealing my people already done stole that one right there man so you know already know what's happening man i'm not happy all right, this was a two-point conversion. Obviously, picking on Tyson Campbell again. You got everybody in their grandmama over here to the field side. So this was just a backside ISO fade pattern, right? So quick fade. See him right here with well, something like this. Some people like to go up top and have a man like this who's six foot six, kind of out jump somebody. But man, I don't know why people just don't shoot it back, back shoulder more, um, and have a big guy like this right get some leverage so when you see the ball in the air like that and they have yet to separate and he can get that bad boy back towards this way more towards the the, the pylon side of this equation look at that absolutely easy straight easy that was a good throw by your man ellinger all right this is what i like from ellinger in the progress from his first to his second year to be able to hit the ability to hit the check down right so we have a bunch of long developing routes right here. Got Colin Johnson trying to give her LJ Humphrey um, running a post right here. Somebody right on the back side. Sometimes that stuff is not open, man. And Ellinger will, just like he did in this particular game, he will try to make a splash play downfield. But on this one, he settles in, waits, waits, and just hits a check now. Nothing wrong with that, right? That's how you get that. And look, you let your boy break a tackle and he's good. That's how you get that completion percentage up to 65%. I wouldn't mind seeing Ellinger hit 70% this season, man. I think if they can do that, um, Texas is going to be right in the thick of things. All right, we see the pocket feel right here. Immediately hit with that back foot. You can see the pocket collapsing on both sides. Uh, major edge breaches on both sides. As soon as that back foot hits, he sees the, the clear out lane right here. Take that bad boy. Boom, get up field, manufacture some yardage. All right, formation to the boundary. This is supposed to be some quick game type stuff right here, but it's just not there, right? Um, you think maybe he could have hit Earl Smith coming out here, but it's, everything's pretty much guarded, right? You would have been trying to force something. So he does a great job of doing what? Improvising. So he could have shot out the back door right here, but you see somebody come in kind of on a spy right there so he wasn't going to be able to make that but he did a good job of keeping his eyes downfield which is something that Jalen Hurts quite frankly didn't do much in his first two seasons right so you gotta give a man credit for progressing we're all allowed to progress in whatever we're doing so you people gotta quit that at home all right but look at this Jalen Hurts on the pool being able to lead a guy to the back throw that bad boy towards the pylon look at the throw right over Tyreek McGee boom all right, you know what? I'm going to have to call it audible. We're going to have to call it a day because it's getting a little bit long in the tooth on this video. And most people don't watch to the end. Hashtag real men watch to the end. Hashtag real football heads. Hopefully, my Oklahoma and Texas people adhere to that slogan or those slogans. And we can get it done like that. But everybody else, they're probably going to watch two or three minutes and come in here and say something that I already said in here. And they're going to be like, oh, it's not even close. It's, our, it's, it's Silent Neller, girl. It's Jalen Hurts. Let's not do that, all right? Let's have some real football discussion, and we can have more of it down the road. But maybe I'll come back with a part two. I wanted to get into a little bit of the physicality and the run game stuff. But, man, it's going to be a long video. And to be honest with you, sometimes it's a waste of time if people aren't watching. So I'm only here for real football heads, and I want to talk to real football heads. So let me know if you're a real football head out there in the comment section. Let me know. Hashtag real men watch to the end, all right? But let me know who you would take. Um, you people who are neutral observers, you know, I know who everybody else is going to take. Oklahoma's going to take J Jalen Hurts and Texas is going to take Sam Ellinger. But um, anybody neutral, just let me know who you would take if you were starting a college football franchise between these two quarterbacks. All right. But with that being said, it's your boy Murph and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.